Bradaloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic. If you own a lake home or have a pond on your property, call my friends at Aquaside so you can get rid of the weeds and algae that are freaking the kids out. They have a complete line of lake and control products that take care of that stuff. The products are easy to use. They work quickly. They're registered with the EPA and DNR. There is no need to let weeds or gunk overtake your lake or pond this summer. Call Aquaside today. Describe your problem. They'll get you the right products. And your place will look great all summer long. Call Aquaside at 1-800-328-9350 or go to Aquaside.com. Hail the flashlight, King. Hail you! And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers, Manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushi. Well, do not adjust your pod or your cast. <laughs> right. This is not Joe Sushi. This is Tom Hauser. I am a fellow University of St. Thomas graduate, although Joe and I graduated from the College of St. Thomas. CST. Yes, CST, yeah. not UST. So, uh, what every, years were you there? I was there from 79 until 83. Okay. And Joe was. My mom worked so, in the just, library there for about 25 several years. Several years before me. Uh, Joe oh, was there. When was your mom there? Uh, at that time, she worked in the uh, John Ireland oh, so, library. So we never met. Did she work in the library? Like, she, 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 never, <laughs> she recalls all the priests and, and students, but she never said anything about a Tom Holland. Can, I, can I ask an inappropriate question? Um, I'll give myself the fog. Yeah. Did you go into the library maybe late at night, uh, Tom, and give the old librarian a little, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Well, I, I like the glasses. I thought Rookie was going to say that, <laughs> that his mom was a server at Tiffany's Lounge, where uh, I would have met her. That's what we called the library. <laughs> right. I'm going to the library again. Got to study now. again. Yeah. <laughs> my parents uh, you know, basically uh, paid for their mortgages. We I got to tell a little story out of school here. I was, uh, after my daughter graduated from St. Thomas a week ago, uh, Saturday, I uh, spent time at a really fun graduation party uh, about a block from her house where a bunch of these guys that she knows from college. We had 12 families, went together and mm, threw them okay. a big grad party. Had a great time. Naturally, I was one of the last parents left there. It, right. The party started about 1030 in the morning. They found you in the bushes. I, we left, need another case. What? <laughs> I left about 630 and I was Ubering home, but... Great thing about uh, Uber is oh, that you can you can make a stop in between. So I said, "Take me to Tiffany's Sports Lounge," oh. <laughs> and I I oh, was boy. lucky enough. I knew I liked you because it wasn't very busy, uh, you know, because people have been in there earlier for graduation stuff. But now it was uh, kind of quiet. But Blake Montet Montpetit was in there, sure. um, and so we start chatting and have a beer. And I said, you know, Blake. My brothers, the Housers have been going to Tiffany Sports Lounge since 1971, shortly after it opened. Holy crap. Because my oldest brother graduated or started at St. Thomas in 71, graduated in 75, and then there's been 15 of us since then. So we've been going to TIFFs yeah. for a long time. Right. And I told him that, uh, you know, his uh, uh, father, Danny, you probably knew Danny, yep. my yep. pet had sadly passed away not too long ago. Great guy. They I all used, are. They all are. They are. The Montpettits <laughs> yes. are just a wonderful Very family. family. But I had always heard stories about in the 70s, these mm. legendary parties down in the basement. And my brothers would describe it, you know, as very dungeon like, right, right, and right. just describe what, what cobblestone the, what, uh, or uh, the, the limestone cobblest walls. Cobblestone <laughs> might have been an upgrade. Yeah, that's that's true. But so uh, I said, Blake, any chance I can go down and and see the basement? He goes, let's go. And I went to first of all when they opened the door. You look down this staircase, <laughs> you think, I got no chance of even surviving the staircase. Right, right. I'm never going to see the basement. I'm going to be unconscious by the time I land on my head right. down below. Anyway, uh, you get down there. They have made some upgrades. They've done some. They swept. The, well, no, they've actually made a nice oh, okay. uh, uh, food preparation area that is walled off from the rest of it. But it, it looked very nice. But I, I just felt like 
it was part of the Hauser family history that I'm in this basement right. where my brothers were going to parties when they were in college 50 years oh ago. And so it was awesome. So then we're down there for a little bit. And then he says to me, uh, oh, I start asking him about, you know, the thing I love about TIFFs is that neon light yeah. up in the top with the martini glasses. Yeah. Yeah. It's classic. It's like something out of Las Vegas right. in the 1960s. Well, it's been there since 1966. And I hope Blake doesn't mind my telling the story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Who's listening anyway? Let's, right. let's think about that. Already clicked off already. Let's think about that. <laughs> They're going to replace it because it can't be repaired. Wow. Uh, part of it in particular, it, you know, neon, right, right. At, at, at a certain point, it degrades to a point where it's not financially sensible to try to even repair it. So they're going to put a new one that's going to look very much like this one. He goes, you want to go up on the roof and see it? Next thing well, I know. Yeah. Yes. yeah. No. <laughs> so not only did I did I have my last child graduate from St. Thomas, then I go over to TIFFs, and now I'm getting a tour of the legendary basement. Now I'm going to a place where even my brothers have never you gone. Them. You want up I've won up to them. It took me 50 years. <laughs> I'm, I'm going up to the roof of Tiffany's Sports Lounge. So uh, Blake and I go up there. We get some fun uh, pictures. But to get up there, I'm thinking, he goes, oh, you think those stairs down to the basement were bad? Wait till you see. You know, oh, no. I'm thinking there's going to be rickety stairs. No, there were no stairs. It was a ladder. You oh, go boy. into this little utility closet. Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> climb a ladder straight up. I, I mean, it was probably... 30 feet. I, I don't oh, know. It was yikes. to get up there. And then there's a hatch. That... Was the was the ladder wobbling a little bit? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure the guy that has to install the sign is going to really appreciate that. Huh? <laughs> I, my guess is they're going to use a crane okay. out in front. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But of course, uh, you know, remember at this point, uh, we had, uh, I think Blake had a cocktail in his hand and I had a beer. So we had to like hand each other's drinks don't, don't, up the stairs. Just don't, I don't care if you fall, just don't spill. <laughs> <laughs> so we get up to the roof, and I'm going, that was awesome. I have no interest in going back down, yeah. because usually climbing up is a little easier right. when you got to turn around and make sure you find your footing oh my God, so no. that you don't do one of those uh, Three Stooges things where you go down and your face just hits right. every <laughs> rung. <of them. laughs> each what? rung of the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> so we get up there and so we're taking pictures. It was just awesome. So then of course I'm walking all over the roof and checking out Highland Park from a vantage point few yeah, that you've never have, seen have probably yeah. ever seen it. That's and you cool. know, I went to school there not quite 50 years ago, 45 though. Uh so it was really fun uh to be up there and the improvements they have made. I mean, I liked frankly they could have left Tiff's the way it was in 1971. Would have loved it. I would have loved it. So, can I, but they've upgraded it. There's TVs everywhere. The food is good. It's yeah. just. But can it's, I transition then back to your your poor your poor daughter who just celebrated a a, 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 ve a big 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 event in her life. She's graduating and then she looks and she says, "Sweet Jesus, my dad's on the roof of Tiffany's right now." And she's kind of glancing over, going, "Oh my God, what did I get myself?" Had into? she glanced up, she would probably thought, "Okay, what's he going to rope swing right, right. off the neon light Come on down, Dad. down on the Fort Parkway?" Stumble down. So oh, that's it was great. funny. They were still, of course, they were moving on to multiple other parties. So I did text her photos. Youth. From the basement and the right. roof, and uh, she was, oh, I want to go up. And all there. of a sudden, blocked, yeah. blocked, yeah. blocked. <laughs> unread, unread. <laughs> but anyway, it was a great way to end, uh, at least for now. My dad graduated from St. Thomas. He's the one who started this uh, nuttery in 1944. Is when he graduated. Really, I didn't so know that. My daughter Caroline graduated 80 years. Wow. To the month after my dad graduated. Wow. wow. So I had That's posted really on cool. Facebook side by side pictures of the two of them. And it wasn't until I did that I saw the resemblance between a young Don Hauser and a young. Uh, Caroline Hauser. And uh, wow, so that's cool, it was fun. Tosby. But an 80 year history, all eight of my dad's kids went there. He went there. Two of my kids went there. And then I think I've got uh, three nieces and three or four nieces and nephews, a total of 15. Wow. Nice. So the the unofficial uh record and from an immediate So you got the Hauser family 
has kept St. Thomas in business well, now. Well, we've, we've helped. I for, don't think we've done it single. Years. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like me with the credit union in my overdrafts. I keep keeping <laughs> yes. the bank open. <laughs> those, those $45 overdrafts on your $6 checks have now? come yeah. in really handy <laughs> yes. uh, over the years. But, yes. Tom, that's really cool. Seriously, yeah. that's really, really well, cool. And my dad, I, in my fact, I, re, I, I saw your photo, and I, I just glanced at it, but I didn't realize – the, the heritage and the history. That's yeah. really cool. And my dad is from the east side of St. Paul. Uh, several of us lived in Ireland Hall, the oldest building on campus, or at least certainly the oldest uh, dorm on campus, uh, named after Archbishop John Ireland. And uh, if you look at it from the sky, you know, it's shaped like a big eye. Hmm, um, and uh, yeah, they, they did that on, on purpose, obviously. But that my daughter lived there. She was the first year that women could live in Ireland Hall. Uh, of course, they got elevators. When right, I lived yeah. there, there were no <laughs> elevators. I lived on the fourth floor. Bring that uh, wet couch up. Uh, Johnny, any of this sound familiar? You know, back in the <laughs> yes. day, yeah, the guys, were, they can schlep that couch up the right. four flights of stairs. <laughs> wow. Why not? But yeah, it was. it's great. I love the history that my dad is from the east side of St. Paul. All of his kids did their time in St. Paul. I've worked in St. Paul now for 31 years and uh, live out on the West Metro, but I love the idea that I can... I'm bi coastal. Sure. Uh, so, and speaking You're of coming out, yes, okay. I am. I, I am bi. And as, I guess as long as we're on this subject, with his thoughts and opinions on building the new St. Thomas Hockey Arena, here is Tom Hauser. Oh, <laughs> oh, sure. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna platter, just on a little platter. So I'm gonna <laughs> wade into that dispute. Well, it, it's funny because I actually had this discussion. I had a a, a great town ball victory last night for the Fairville Lakers uh, in Cannon Falls. I'm kidding, but I was talking to a guy about this because he listens to the show and says. I don't understand why everyone in St. Paul's so bent out of shape about the new hockey arena. And I'm dumb. I, I I don't know. I just think it's build it or whatever if you want to be D1. But w is it just the neighborhood that doesn't want it? Is that is that the it's, deal? It's that immediate neighborhood now. And mm -hmm. I will tell you, I was when I was at St. Thomas, I was both uh, on the All-College Council. I was vice president of the All-College Council and dealt with parking issues back in the early 80s sure. at St. Thomas, whenever they wanted to build a new dorm or a new building or do anything. And then uh, later I was also editor of the Aquan, the old uh, St. Yeah. Thomas newspaper. It's kind of like Donald Trump's you dream. Accept. Donald Trump's Trump dream to be president and editor of the paper. <laughs> so he right can both. control the news <laughs> and, and the politics. <laughs> so anyway, I, I've, I've, I've covered them from a newspaper perspective at the St. Thomas newspaper and on the All-College Council, it has been a problem for a long time for the neighbors. And let's let's be real, all of the neighbors living there, none of them were there when the college started in, what, 1885? Right. There's some of that, you know, uh, if you, you move next to an airport and then you discover, oh my gosh, there is noise out noise. here. Well, sure. How do we put yeah. a stop to that? Yeah. If you move near a college, and again, not taking sides on this issue, just saying, if you're going to move within a block or two of a college or university that's already in a residential neighborhood, from September to April, it's yeah, going to be yeah, there's right, going to be right. there's going to be conflict, and you know they've been they've been arguing, and I, I think pretty soon there's supposed to be some resolution to this. But oh, I, I didn't I, know that. I think it's I think it's coming up. St. Paul City Council needs to put the final, uh, give the final go ahead because initially they had go ahead, then it was appealed, and then a judge I think made them stop. There was an injunction, so so they're not they weren't building for a time, but they were making the argument it's uh, not just about parking, it's about the environment and the uh, all of that that comes with car exhaust and all that, but it comes down it's parking, it's sure. traffic. That's what they're concerned about. Because that's such a small footprint. It really it, is. Trust me, that's not going to be what tips the climate over right, <laughs> a, right. an arena near St. Thomas. But parking and those types of things, and it can be a challenge if you live there. But my thinking is you got to move into a neighborhood like that with the eyes wide open, sure. realizing this may be a problem. Well, That's and I think if it's in the hands of the St. Paul City Council, I think the only logical thing to do is we got to raise the uh, property taxes. I mean, I think we should probably do that, don't you guys? Uh, <laughs> I I have to be I'm agnostic on that. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> you dumb and <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, so the, the arena looks beautiful. I, 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 it'd be awesome if they're able to work something out. I think if the St. Paul City Council does approve it, if they haven't already, it will come with some concessions sure. to the neighborhood, which sure. is always a good way to do it. Like maybe there's certain nights, no events can be going on or, and St. Thomas, to their credit, has been saying, we're going to try to encourage uh, people shuttling to games, like have a parking lot, you know, like a mile away sure. where they could take a shuttle uh, to the game, which is great as long as it's a really reliable shuttle. Because last time I checked, most hockey and basketball games take place in the dead of winter. Right. You don't leave people waiting out at a bus stop so mm, they can shuttle right, to their right. car. Yeah. It's got to be continuous and it's got to be efficient. And But if they could do something like that, then that would be, uh, I think, uh, something that could mollify the neighbors, but we'll we'll see what happens. And you're going to sign that check, being a former uh, <laughs> UST <Yeah>. alum. <laughs> well, we're signing fewer checks now. I as suppose, of, yeah, you're your youngest graduate. You got a raise as of May uh, <laughs> May 18th. Yeah. So, uh, but we're very excited for my daughter Caroline uh, Hauser, who is the final graduate from the Hauser family, at least for now, right. uh, from the University of St. Thomas. We're going to take a break, I understand, and we'll be back on Garage Logic.